Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's Overkill bringing you something a little new. Um, I haven't posted in a while because I've been a little bit busy messing around with some projects. Um, and that project today is button boxes. Everybody wants more button boxes. Okay, we need more buttons. We need more switches, right? And I think everyone is just like me where you want that... Um, experience but you know you see the guys doing this stuff on the forums they're making these custom builds these great cockpits um or even just those guys who throw this panel together it has got buttons and switches everywhere so you don't ever have to worry about reaching down for a freaking keyboard or looking for your mouse um and today i'm going to show you guys how to do that fairly simply okay there's a couple of caveats a couple things we can't do but for the most part um i think it's going to be fun so Here's what I've done so far. Okay, so I just used a, a couple of sheets of Lexan plastic, measured out the distance of, around my um, Thrustmaster Warthog throttle, and then um, just sort of eyeballed it. So guys, by the way, no making fun of the construction. I cannot stress enough. I did not give a crap how this thing came out and looked. Okay, I wanted to know functionality. I wanted to know if this was going to work. So no making fun of me. I know it looks uglier than dirt. Okay. The other side of that is I fly in VR. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Um, this is a really simple procedure. I was actually blown away by how simple this is. I initially started out trying with the Arduino boards and the Arduino boards, although have significantly, significantly more functionality to them. Um, they're they're a pain in the butt to use um you really got to know what you're doing you have to understand how to read the code i believe that it's written in c which for those of you who don't know is a programming language that can be rather difficult again if you don't understand it um which i don't um i, I was trying to wing it uh, on the fly um there's a couple of videos out there where you see guys you know the do-it-yourself button box and they say yeah use this code you know blah blah and everything will work great the trick to that is if it's using arduino and you see a specific build that says build this box we're using a five by five matrix blah blah you have to build it with the same number of buttons and, and rotary dials or it's not going to work so you literally i mean you can move them around and reposition them but the problem with those do-it-yourself videos that you see on youtube where build this box you literally it they mean what they say build that box and they're phenomenal they're great but you know, for example, myself, I saw a great one that was really cool, slick, had rotary dials, switches and everything, but it also had an ignition switch, which I don't particularly need. Um, so there's things like that. I wanted something much more customizable. I wanted something that I could build myself, that I could put together rather easily, um, that didn't require hours and hours of programming. And, and I dug around for a minute and I found this. Okay, so this is a zero delay USB encoder. It's designed primarily for arcades, you know, if you want to build your own arcade. Um, but uh, it works really well for our purposes. So all I did here is I've got um, 10 toggle switches, five with the uh, safety guard covers and five not. Um, the five that have the uh, switch exposed, they actually come with uh, little rubber feet that, or rubber grips that can go on top of them so um, you can feel the difference. And that's what I was looking for when I built mine. And this is a recommendation I give you right off the bat. Don't just go, yeah, I want to put some buttons together and throw something together and boom, you have buttons. Think about it. Think about what you want. Think about what your needs are. Think about the functionality. Well, how am I going to effectively use it, especially if you're like me and you're a VR flyer? Okay, the reason I designed my switches the way I, are, way I did, the way I are, the way I did was because I needed to, a setup where I could easily tell the difference without looking at them. Okay, all of my navigation as far as managing my controls is through tactile contact, right? I, I got to be able to touch it and know what I'm touching. Okay, um, so if you're a VR flyer, think ahead, think of things like that. Um, how easy is it going to be for you to reach for it and find it? How can you, are you going to be able to easily identify, uh, you know, what switch you're touching with your fingers, you know? at a speed where it makes it worthwhile, right? I mean, the whole purpose of this is to eliminate the need for a mouse. So if you find yourself being still significantly faster with the mouse, well, then that's something you gotta think about your design, okay? But these things, getting back to the board real quick, they are so easy to use, guys. So the only row that we are concerned with right off the bat is the very bottom row here on the screen right next to the blue and white wires. Okay, there are 12 ports there. There are over 12 of these cables. You literally hook the cables up to the positive and negative lead on your switches, plug the um, cable into the board here on the port. There's a USB cable that you can see up here that comes with the board. You plug it into the board, plug the USB cable into your computer, and voila, your computer has just detected a new switch or a new button box, okay? Um, 
Now, if your, com your computer will probably report that it has 12 buttons, even if you're not using all of them, no big deal. Um, but you can still go into the control panel and, and, and see it all active. So that's the handy part. So this is the primary purchase. Okay, this is where we're going to start. Now, there's two options when using this. You have this one here, and you have this guy here. This is the LED um, zero delay. Now, so if you buy a button that has, and guys, be very specific right here, always on LEDs. Okay, for example, the toggle switches I use on mine, when um, the switch is in the up position, it's in the on position, the light comes on. If it is not in the on position, as you see here, it's off. Okay, so that's not always on. That's basically a, a triggered, right? Um, so if you get an always on LED, so the LED is on whether the switch is on or off, this is the board for you if that's something that you're looking into. Now, that was a mistake that I made um, when I bought my switches. You have to make sure you buy a switch or button or whatever that is going to work in that manner. Okay, so that's the first step. Know what you want to do. So design still comes first. Then what all I use is a couple of these Lexan sheets. Okay, um, everything that you see here on on my build, it's, it's all this Lexan plastic. It was easy to work with. You can use a plethora of different glues and stuff to um, to put it all together. Like you can even see like it comes with a couple suggestions down here that you can use to glue it together. Any of this is fine. Um, especially if you're going to paint over it, right? I mean, I wanted mine, you know, even though it's hideous, I, I still didn't want it to stand up quite that bad. I didn't want it to look like something that I found in a shoebox down the street. So again, look at your dimensions, look at what you have to work with, okay? Draw out what you want, measure it, and then move from there. Then as far as getting switches, it's pretty black and white. Um, the only thing that I'm not positive will work are... Um, three position switches with this. I, I can't see how those would work. Um, and that's only because you have a positive and a negative lead with the two position switches, and that's what the um, zero delay has. It has a, a spot for two positions, all right? So I don't think that a three position switch would work, all right? Um, so again, something to think about in your build. Now, moving on here, as far as still picking your buttons and switches, like just looking down this row right here, these, easy as, easy as cake. These are the same size as the two red ones you see here on the build um, that I did, okay? Two position toggle switches, okay? Cake walk. Um, plethora of different buttons and knobs. Um, the toggle switches that I used, oh, where are they? Oh, here's an example of some anyway. Um, and they come in much cheaper. I think I got a five pack or 10 pack for these for significantly cheaper. But you can see here, Okay, when they're in the on position, you know, the light lights up. So um, makes them pretty cool to have the, the covered switches. I use this for like Master Arm and Jettison, things like that. So pretty handy stuff. Again, real quick to reach down and grab. So plan your builds out, guys. Um, all you do is wire the positive, oh, you know, literally, you just want to make sure that you wire them the same. And most switches are um, are, are marked. So like, for example, I believe this one here, this port here is the positive lead, and this one up here is going to be um, the LED or um, uh, ground wire, okay? So, you know, as long as you wire them, you know, the same way, um, you'll get the same performance that I got, and it's so simple. You don't need to know how to solder. If the plug doesn't fix, I mean, I don't necessarily recommend this, but this is how easy it can be. You can simply cut the end off it, strip the wire down, run it through this hole, twist it up real tight so it won't move, do the same thing up here, and again, voila, you're done. Okay? It doesn't care how it's there as long as it gets contact. Okay? That's all you have to worry about. Now, coming over here to these rotaries, the only thing I will say is that I have not figured out um, if these are compatible with the zero delay. And what I mean is you can use these rotaries. Um, the encoders, but it only registers as one button, which means it's only going to register no matter if you turn this left or right, it's going to do the same action. Okay, it's the zero encoder board, the zero delay encoder board, this guy can't distinguish whether the, the rotor is being turned to the left or being turned to the right. So something to think about with that as well. Um, I haven't figured out a way to use those, so I would stay away from the rotary encoders for now. If you guys know how to do that or an easy way to use rotary encoders, please leave a comment in the field below. I would love to know about it, okay? Um, absolutely, uh, definitely high on my, on my list of things to figure out. 
Well, guys, this, there isn't a whole lot more to this one. I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. Um, I hope I didn't rush it too bad. I just wanted to show you guys how really easy it really, really was to build this. I have maybe a total time um, from start to completion of this particular project, maybe six hours of, of my own time. And that includes design. That includes the, the, the shopping. Um, this was actually the second build I did. I decided I didn't like the first one, scrapped it, and, and did something completely different. Um, so, I mean, and most of it was honestly waiting for the glue to dry. Um, the one thing I will tell you about most of the glues, make sure that it's cured first before you start really putting a lot of pressure on. But, uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that uh, like and subscribe button. Hope to hear from you guys soon. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and any ideas that you have about building your box. I'd love to hear them. Until next time, guys, this is Overkill. Have a wonderful weekend.